Hey guys, so this is a wonderful example of how you take a very small space and turn it into something beautiful that can actually bring income to you from your own property, from your own home. And so, welcome. I'm having a little bit of a trouble with the lighting. It is um, meant to be a cozy nook, and so it doesn't have a lot of big open windows. It has a lot of curtains, so bear with me that it's going to be a little dark. Uh, most Airbnbs make somewhere between $85 and $165 a night. If it's a really big mansion, they can make into the hundreds. But I think what we're kind of focusing on now is something you can put into the back corner of your property, something that maybe is already there that just needs to be changed a little bit and brought up to code for living standards so that you can make an income off of it. The least expensive Airbnb we ever stayed in was a $50 a night Airbnb in uh, Texarkana. And what it was was this cute little house that through the backyard went to a little coffee house and the lady owned both of them. So she would work at the coffee house during the day. And then when she had somebody come in from Airbnb that, or had them leave, she'd run over, change the bedding, spruce everything up and then go back to work. So it took her maybe half an hour a day to keep the Airbnb managed. And she was making $50 a day from that rental. But the nice thing is, is that with an Airbnb, you're not necessarily dealing with renters. You're dealing with somebody who comes in and goes out and you have their credit card on file so that if they damage something, you have recourse. Uh, we never found that any of the Airbnbs we were in had seen, shown any sign of damage or um, they were all really well kept up. It was obvious that they were a really great asset for the people who owned them. the more personal touches you add, the more people are going to want to come there. If it looks like a home, but like the kind of home that you want to live in, then people are going to be drawn to it. The pictures make a really huge difference. Showing the flair, showing the personality of your home makes a huge difference. A lot of times people just slap up a picture of a room where a bed is unmade, or they have very drab sheets, drab bedding, or maybe the room isn't clean. We have been in townhouse type apartments where we actually had a communal bathroom. We had a bedroom, but then we had a communal bathroom uh, that was just down the hall. There was a laundry facility, but it felt, it felt like a home. It didn't feel like an apartment. It was beautiful. Every part of it was pretty. The communal kitchen was beautiful, the communal fridge, and it was one of our favorite places. There, the outside, the beauty of the streets was part of what pulled us to it was because they had just a phenomenal space. The, the home, the, the townhouse itself is beautiful, but the, the streets were gorgeous. And on the other side, we've been to places where the outside was the worst part. You came up and, and it looked like nobody in the neighborhood cared about their home, except for where we were staying. And they had done such a fantastic job on the inside that it just didn't matter. You felt safe. Usually they have your parking like right in front of the residence so that they can keep an eye on your car. We've never had a problem with the break-in with an Airbnb. And um, the last thing I would say is that don't discount um, glamping. We've been to places where they actually rented out a little RV, especially in the summer. They were much less expensive than other ways to camp, so maybe $25, $35 a night. And they'd have a little fire pit. Uh, that was one way that they've done it. Um, other places have done, like we, there in Florida, in Miami, Florida, there was a tree house. The little house wound around the tree and you had the tree house and there was a communal bathroom and a communal shower. And there was no electricity in the tree house itself, but you had access to a, a main space that did have electricity. In Georgia, we stayed in, in a tiny house on wheels and it had running water, but it didn't have a toilet. They had a composting toilet inside the tiny house and it was very clean. You couldn't smell anything. We've been at some others where it was in the back, someone's backyard in Boise, Idaho, they had a yurt and there was no water or anything like that in the yurt. You had this little pathway that you followed to a garage bathroom in the owner's home and they had these cute little stepping stones and it was wonderful. But you didn't have a bathroom. You had to walk to it, but it was part of the experience. It was a yurt for crying out loud. It should be like glamping. And so we'd, you'd walk back and take your shower, go to the bathroom, and then you'd walk back and they had a little stove. I think it was a propane stove inside the yurt. And 
that was how you lived in that year and it was amazing and again and we actually had a hard time getting into a lot of these places because people could find what it is they were looking for people some people really just want to glamp they want to go camping but have a bathroom and a shower off to the side so the sky's the limit as long as you really take into account uh, honesty and safety make sure that you're very straightforward about what's available some airbnbs advise you not to bring children they're like this is a somewhat dangerous airbnb it's not a good place for children some airbnb say yes bring pets some say no please don't bring pets some say we have pets on the facility if you're allergic to cats this is not the right airbnb for you we have had so much fun in our airbnbs and they've given us ideas for what we want to do in our own house and so hopefully this helped you out for those of you who are looking for passive income and you have amazing skills plumbing, carpentry, whatever that may be. It's very simple to set up an Airbnb and uh, the, the costs are pretty negligible. Some Airbnbs, they'll charge you $50 as a cleaning fee. This is no exception. This one had, I think, a $35 cleaning fee. And um, I'm sure that a lot of people leave a huge mess when they leave, but at $35 for the 15 minutes it takes to clean up, it's worth it to the owners as long as they do add that fee. And this year they also added in a tax. So previous years there was no tax on Airbnb, but now there is a tax. And I don't know, I think, I think it's a wonderful thing. We used to stay in hotels when we had problems with the RV. If we had to have kind of a layover because it was being worked on in the garage, we would go get a hotel. But we had some really bad experiences in hotels and it didn't generally feel like a safe neighborhood where we could actually afford to stay. No place for the kids to run and jump and play and scream. Airbnbs, they generally have some amazing outdoor spaces. Three of the Airbnbs we've stayed in have actually had fishing streams in them. And others have had docks, and others have had paddle boats, and others have had big backyards, and others have had chickens that you can go and pet. And so, so much fun. Such a way to enrich your community, such a way to make money for your family with what you you know, if, if you've got the building on site and you're already paying for it, why not have it make you some money? So hopefully that was encouraging and helpful, and we'll talk to you later. So the best thing about a place like this is that it feels better than a hotel. It feels safer than a hotel. And in a lot of instances, it's not more expensive than a hotel because uh, people who have one of these in their backyard don't have to deal with all the overhead of a big hotel and they're right Johnny on the spot to do their own housekeeping, then they can keep costs down. So that is one thing to consider when you're do wanting to do an Airbnb is that somebody has to come in and change the sheets. A lot of times you can find a teenager who will do it for $7 every time, but a lot of times you can't. And so are you willing to come out and change the bedding? Are you willing to come out and check that everything is right? Which is why it's so convenient if it is in your backyard because then you just have to walk there. You don't have to get in drive. And, and so I feel like it is the ultimate cottage industry. As long as you feel safe doing it, uh, I, you know, there, there is also that factor. You do have strangers coming in, but I've only ever read one bad review. And that was a review where a super host had marked that they didn't want dogs on the facility. And then a man brought a dog in, the neighbor saw it, called the Airbnb owner who lived in another state. And it turned out that he had to leave the Airbnb because he had a dog that wasn't part of the deal. So that was the only bad review I ever saw or an issue where there was a safety problem. I took a whole bunch of little short vignettes to show the different ways that they fix this little place up for pennies. For instance, the floors are made out of pallet wood and they purposefully left little divots. They, they sanded it, but they left the nail holes, they left divots. What they did was stain the pallet wood different colors before they put it down and then they put a very thick coat of lacquer polyurethane um, over the top that is slightly tacky to the touch so you're not slipping on it but it's a very thick and um, very easy to walk on you don't snag your feet on it but it gives a little texture under your feet and it's a beautiful floor I think they have more time invested in this and they do money the same thing could be said of all the wall fixtures they have the little, it looks like tin, but you can buy these in sheets from True Value for $16 a sheet. And, um, I, or I guess it looks like maybe copper tin. And they took 
a couple of tiny strips of that to add a little bit of depth to cover the seam. And that one they antiqued a little bit. Over here, they actually have what looks like um, beadboard almost, but it's old beadboard. Pulled it out with all the nail holes and everything and then put it up in here and then finished it with that kind of coppery tin, uh, glossy, gold colored paint. Uh, other things they did was they took some very standard tables, things you could get at a secondhand store, and they painted it, they antiqued it in the range of colors that they'd already used, but nothing is matchy-matchy as far as they didn't go down to Bed Bath & Beyond and buy everything that matched. It is all very eclectic, and it makes it feel like a home rather than like um, something that you can't touch. The, the linens were pretty. They were not overly expensive, but they were pretty. More importantly, the sheets were really nice. We have found that in Airbnbs, the sheets make a huge difference in how well you sleep at night.